today we're in search of the MH370. And for those that don't know, the MH370 is an aeroplane that seemingly vanished in thin air nine years ago. And we believe the Cocos Keeling Islands can potentially hold some answers as to what happened that day. We have breaking news. Malaysia Airlines confirms it has lost contact with a plane carrying 227 passengers. It's the mess. Looks like there's something interesting up here, actually. What the hell is this? Oh, he's the boss around here, I think. There's another dead turtle here, Fran. I wonder what's killing them all. What the hell is this thing? This is but your mind does start to run a little bit wild. What the hell is this thing? So the MH370 was a Malaysian aircraft that seemingly vanished off the face of the planet nine years ago. And it's probably one of the biggest mysteries of the modern day era and an absolute tragedy for the families on board and involved with the accident. The fact that we're setting out to solve this mystery and find this plane seems somewhat ambitious and bordering on ridiculous, but bear with us guys, please bear with us for this. Yeah, so we're watching the Netflix show and the conclusion says that they think the plane has crashed in the Southern Indian Ocean, yes. which is very close to where we are at the moment. Yeah, and then as we looked further into it, from the crash site, there's a current called the West Australian Current that goes due north, and that would bring any debris straight here to the Cocos Keeling Islands. That's right, and even weirder, the first piece of debris got found in the Reunion Island, which means that to get there, it would have gone straight past the Cocos Killing Island. Basically it means to get to Reunion Island from the crash site, it had to go straight past the Cocos Islands. And we started looking at the simulations that had been done. Of course, experts all over the world were right into this, working with the ocean currents and the winds. And every single one of those simulations had the debris from the crash site coming up and washing straight through the Cocos Keeling Islands here before heading on to Madagascar and Reunion and these places. And there's been no official search done here on these islands. So this is when we're starting to think like, hang on, we're a real chance at finding something here. Yeah, we can definitely do it. Cause the guy that found most of the debris is just a normal guy like us. His mm -hmm. name is Blake Gibson. Yeah, he sort of just dedicated his time to looking in the right areas, but he didn't check Cocos Keeling Islands. And we know exactly where to look because on the other side of these islands is where it collects all of the debris, all of the rubbish that washes in from that direction. So that's where we're gonna head shortly isn't it that's right wish us luck the other thing that's worth mentioning guys is on the show it was, it was rather confronting with all the victims families and it seemed like they just wanted more answers they weren't satisfied with the answers they'd be given so if we are able to find anything that can give further closure to these families I mean that would just be that'd be something special so let's go friend let's do it all right, so we've just launched the boat. We're about to head out, but on this episode, we've got a special visitor, don't we, Fran? Yeah, my sister Chiara is here with us, so it's visiting and she'll be in the episode. How good. Permission to come on board? Yeah, permission granted. Jump on. <laughs> Let's do it. Can you guys see the rainbow? Wow. So cool. All right, everyone, hang on. Such a different scenery. Alright, go for it there, friend. Alright, we're gonna have a quick walk through the mud and then off to the other side, the exposed side where all the debris washes up. Big one, isn't it? <laughs> He's angry. Oh. Get him. He's the boss around here, I think. It's just staunching straight up to me. <laughs> oh no, that turtle. Look, Jack. Ah, oh, he stinks. I wonder what happened. Hey guys, I think we found a baby mantis shrimp. What is that? It's a baby mantis shrimp. That is awesome. We've never seen one before. That's another one. one. Oh go. yeah. Oh my god. These are the two species of mantis shrimp. That's the gold one and that's the tiger one. That's so cool. It's awesome, huh? What the hell is this thing? Knock knock. Anyone home? Spaceship. It she looks like a little rocket. There's some bizarre things that have washed into this little bay. 
It's a little turtle to be dying, hey? There's another dead turtle here, Fran. wonder what's killing them all. Oh, this guy stinks. We've got to cut through the jungle here to get to the other side, which is the windward side where everything washes in. And that's our best chance over there. So much rubbish already washed up in the jungle. Made it. This side of the island gets all the wind, all the current, all the time, 365 days a year. So I'll go that way, Jack is gonna go that way, and uh, wish us luck. Let's see what we can find. <laughs> so the items would have now had years to wash up here, um, and anything that floats continually gets pushed higher and higher as the storm surges come. So our best bet is right up here, kind of into the jungle almost because as we look closer there's all sorts of objects that have made their way up here this is where i'm going to concentrate my search so the items i'm looking for first and foremost uh, anything that's obviously from an airplane similar to the objects that were found over there in reunion so anything from say the wings of the plane and then i'll also be looking for kind of any accessories associated with an airplane so think of the in-flight food service so something like a packet of chips if it's got an expiry date or a batch number on it that narrows it down to a similar time frame you know that's what i'm looking for and then of course there's the personal belongings so anything like a purse or a wallet or a backpack which we actually see lots of backpacks washed in here i'll now be checking all of these for names seeing what's inside them and chances are the item which we're looking for could be incredibly subtle and, and commonly overlooked but today we're going to leave no stone unturned check everything we can and see if we could come up with anything that could maybe provide some of the victims families with a little bit more closure that they're looking for Way back here into the jungle this is the kind of areas i'm looking for where stuff has just been washed back over years of cyclones and storm surge nothing really catches my eye there there's a lot of that styrofoam but unfortunately here we get a lot of the currents coming through from indonesia and place like this where people living on the ocean and fishing for a living don't have access to kind of rubbish bin and recycling areas so everything ends up in the ocean and eventually ends up here this could be a bit of a hot spot here look at all the rubbish That's stylish, that one. What is this? From afar, it looked like a, a brick of something else. And in the news lately, I've seen there's been a few bricks similar to this of a, a different substance washing in on, on mainland Australia. So we'll keep our eyes out for that as well to report to the authorities. So the three most common items so far, definitely thongs and discarded shoes. This styrofoam, styrofoam lids that obviously float and then water bottles water bolt it with lighters and then light bulbs being a close fourth and fifth wow now have a go at the rubbish pile down here this is a, a bit of a back eddy caused by the rocks where everything catches i'm gonna have to go and have a good look down here this is fiberglass but it's, i guess it's a good example of why you know potentially heavy items can wash in because it's filled with foam so it floats it could be something as simple as this that there's a, an id card in a laptop case let's have a look oh man the more you look you start to feel that it's you know it's not such a absurd kind of unlikely scenario that we could find an id or something like that in here nothing in there unfortunately oh come on just like a something i think people aren't willingly just throwing you know laptop cases into the ocean so Chances are it's probably from, you know, an accident somewhere. Unfortunately, nothing to, to identify it here. This rubbish dump here is a potential gold mine. There's a number of items I want to have a look at here. You know, it could be personal belongings. So it looks like a little kid's purse type of thing. Obviously, this is all broken up. Not going to give us any answers, but we'll keep looking here. It's kind of exactly what I had in mind. Finally, like something like this could be the answer we need. I'm actually like a bit nervous kind of looking through this stuff to be honest but this one zip isn't open so i'll be able to open that up and something might have stayed in there something like this could be what we're looking for 
things can last a long time in the ocean so this looks like possibly a makeup tin that has been in the ocean for a long time but pop the lid and you know that looks like wouldn't say good as new but <laughs> Got some prescription medicine tablets for involuntary perspiration, waist ache and back ache, over fatigue, poor memory, etc. Sounds like uh, it's exactly what I need. Once again, this looks like it's been bobbing around the ocean a long time, but I can actually hear something inside it. Completely unopened. Look at this. Perfect capsules. Different language written on the capsules themselves. See, that's interesting. Now, also, guys, I appreciate that a lot of you might actually have a, a better eye than me for looking for certain things. So. As we go through this uh, this junk pile that I'm filming, keep an eye out and let me know if you think there's anything we've overlooked. What's this? Well, this looks a lot like the objects of debris they found. This is just fiberglass over ply, so most likely from a boat, this one. Thoughts? Anyone knows what that thing could be? If you got any clues of what we're looking at is part of a Boeing 777, please let us know in the comments. So whatever our result here, there is one certainty, one thing for sure is that there is hundreds of other items linked to this plane, still undiscovered out here guys, that could provide the answers. So you just never know what you'll run into. Wonder how the girls are going. That's a raft. It's a big tire. that in the bushes it's a bucket wow Kiara found the gastropod with the shiva eye still in it can you see it there's a big sort of sand gully here where things have been washed in looks like there's something interesting up here actually what the hell is this now hang on a second oh it's just it's just styrofoam oh for a second that looked like the right material what we're after How'd you go? What did you see? Uh, we saw heaps of things that could be part of a plant. Really? But yeah, like a mini bar fridge or oh, yeah. a life jacket. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but uh, we're not 100% sure. We need your help. Yeah, okay. Let us know in the comments if we've seen anything here that needs a further look. Yeah. That's a jellyfish. Yeah. What's the plan now, Fran? Let's head to another island and uh, keep looking. Sounds good. The water through here is not normally this clear, so we're just cruising through the shallows looking for either crabs or fish. There's lots of big turtles actually right in the shallows, which is interesting. Look at this bone fish, it's big. Jack couldn't resist, he saw some bonies. Yes. You're on! <laughs> you got one. What is it? I think it's a bone fish. <laughs> Holy moly. Whoa. Ready, one, two, three. Ooh. He's huge, eh? Hey? It's a big one. A beautiful bone fish. We've found out these guys are quite challenging to eat with all their bones, so I'll just get the hook out and release him. See you, mate. Bye. Lost. Another one. Oh, oh. Yeah, different species. Yeah. Would be good if it's a trevally. Lunch is sorted. <laughs> Yay, that's the right species. Yeah. Wow. That could be lunch, hey? What do you think? Perfect. Perfect for three? Yeah. just pulled up on the edge of one of these blue holes. In the middle, there's some beautiful coral up. I've already seen sharks and turtles, so I'm going to throw a mask on and jump in. Yourself, fast. 
Go, go, go. Oh, this is awesome. The girls have just jumped in and there's a pod of dolphins now swimming around them. Oh, here they are. There's dolphins just here. Just there they are. The more that we started to look into it, we found out that some of the locals of the area also had some interesting things to report. Not long after the MH370 went down, you know, for the following months, we were finding new thongs, and then it was like aircraft bottles, yeah, uh, spirit bottles. And you told me as well that the shoes with the laces done up was a pretty sort of confronting uh, thing to yeah. find. These are all new shoes, shoelaces done up. They were sort of littered up the beach over months. There's so many things that were sort of washed up that had to be for the MH370. But was there any official search done by authorities or any? any no, nothing, no, nothing from nothing, here. Nothing from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I come across this, they said it's definitely the nose wheel of a, an aircraft, but it was an MH370. So this is the piece that sits over the landing wheel of an aeroplane with this hinge there that's just been broken off. This hinges down and then that's where that wheel sits. I wonder how it ended up in the ocean. So interesting. All right, Jack has gone to see and find any debris. And Kiara and I will take you down for a snorkel and explore a little sand cave. Well, this is most likely completely unrelated to the missing plane. Unfortunately, there's a lot of these spots of oil that washes in over all these islands. There must have been a, an oil spill somewhere where this has just floated around on the surface of the, the ocean before washing in here. You wonder how many sort of seabirds and fish and stuff it's affected on its way in. It's like there's something way back in the bushes here. Ooh. Imagine if that said <laughs> MH370 on it. No, styrofoam box, highly unlikely it was from the, the missing aeroplane. But it just shows how far the storm surge washes debris up here, like anything that floats to get washed up in the storms all the way up here. Looks like there's some rain coming. looks like a steel sink. It's obviously very rusty now, but let's see if we can get a better look at it. It's an old steel sink, incredibly heavy, and this isn't the type of sink they'd have on the, the Boeing aeroplane. Very heavy. Wonder what its story was to get here. Not quite sure what this is, but your mind does start to run a little bit wild and the way it's all rusted and stuff, it's a bit hard to tell. Look at this. What the hell is this thing? 
got no idea what this is, but it's almost like there was, say, a shipwreck here that's washed in because there's these rusted bits over this entire section here. I do appreciate that what we're trying to do is not just locate a needle in a haystack. It's hoping that that haystack washed in here sometime in the last decade. But as we started looking into the possibility of it, it seemed less and less ridiculous and it seemed like there is every possibility in the world that uh, a bit of debris could have washed in here. I've never been on this coral cave before. Very rocky and corally. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, yeah, cool. Run, run, there's a more eel. There's two. They're coming towards us. Can you see them? There's one hiding underneath here. Could be something as simple as sunscreen lotion that's washed in on the back of these. They've got the batch number and also the date of the expiry. So if we kind of narrow it down to the right time frame, you know, we'd be able to get in touch with the company that made this, search the batch number and see if these things are lined up with the date that the plane went missing. This one, unfortunately, is not even close. A shark or something has bitten this one. I guess this is also highlighting one of the other major problems we've got in the world that this one isn't going away anytime soon the problems of plastic and rubbish uh, in the world's oceans. For example, here, this is just a bit of plastic, but what a fish in the ocean could see, this could look like a smaller fish or a great bit of food. And you see either a, a wahoo with sharp teeth or a small shark has actually come up and chewed this, bitten a little bit off and then spat it out. You know, sometimes they're actually, you know, eating these, eating these bits of plastic. It's a massive problem. And the more we walk up and down these coastlines, it's the same problem wherever we go. Plastics and rubbish everywhere. Heinz tomato sauce. I've never seen these on a plane, so we'll keep looking. Looks like a kid's bike helmet. Another thing of sunscreen lotion chewed apart by a fish here. Looks like a torch off a life raft. We really need something with a date or a name on it. All right, that was a long day of search. Um, we don't think we found anything conclusive, but if any of you know or think we overlooked anything, please let us know in the comments. We'll have a good read through the comments, guys. Everyone's got a theory and an opinion on this, but there is one thing for sure, that there is other aspects of this plane sitting on a beach somewhere, probably under, under a palm tree, that are gonna be found by someone like you and I. So please keep your eyes out if you are looking in these kind of remote places of the world. We certainly will be. I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. We'll keep you posted if we find anything more. Thanks for watching. See you guys.